can tell we're back here in the high country of Colorado, right by the Eisenhower Tunnel, and that means only one thing, the Ike Gauntlet with... Mr. Truck. Kent with Mr. Truck, and of course... Nathan. Nathan, tell them what we got for him today. We have the brand new Ram 1500 and the 2014 Toyota Tundra. We got it, folks. We gotta pull a lot of strings, make a lot of phone calls to get it, but coming up next on the... Fast lane truck. <laughs> Almost said fast lane car, didn't you? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> We've got the Ike Gauntlet for you. Nathan, can you believe that this is already episode four? Now, in the last episode, we had three trucks, including the 2013 Tundra. So this time we're gonna do the 2014 Tundra. That's and right. of course, we have right behind me the new Ram. So we have to toss to see which one gets to drive which one. Which one do you want to drive? Uh, I, I don't care. I, no, I do. I want the Ram. I want the Ram too. All right, <laughs> call it. I, I'm gonna toss it this all right, time. All right, all right, ready? All right, yeah, heads. Tails! All right. All oh, right. yeah, I'm all, all right. about tails. So I get the Tundra, you get the Ram. Yeah! Now the big surprise under the hood of the Tundra is there is no surprise. It's a carryover powertrain, the same 5.7 liter V8 that puts out 381 horsepower and 401 pound foot of torque. They've redesigned the truck, but kept the same powertrain. The good news is there's a 430 rear axle, which is a really good towing setup. So let's take it up to the Ike Gauntlet and see how the Tundra does compared to the Ram. Let me reintroduce you to one of my favorite power plants, the Hemi. This particular one puts out 395 horsepower and more importantly, 407 pound-feet of torque. It's a 5.7 liter V8, so it's about the same size as the Toyotas, but it has a better output. Here's the thing, indeed, eight-speed automatic transmission, but it's hooked up to a 392 rear axle. So. Power to the Toyota, damn it. Toyota Tundra, they, they raise their bed height, and it's a little harder to reach the floor on these. If you got tools down there, you got a shovel down there, you got to get up on your tiptoes, at least I do. 22 and a half, that's what? An, an inch and, and a half, half deeper than the Ram. Yeah. And with the, the first industry, uh, first one in the industry to come out with a tailgate, that you just let go of it, and uh, the cyst on the tailgate lowers it slowly, so you don't wake up the kids in the cab, you don't make all the noise. Now these, just as the Ram and the half ton with the crow cab, only come in a five and a half foot bed. So you get motorcycles, you gotta drop the tailgate, you go to motorcycle here, plywood, you gotta drop the tailgate and tie everything in. So, of course you asked for it, so we're gonna do it. Last time we did the Ike Gauntlet, we had new Silverado, which we'll get in that in a second. Yeah. We had the old Tundra, and we had the Ford. We need a leaderboard, Nathan. That's right. So, now no white. So, da. Ребята, здорово. Привет. Вот, пожалуйста. Here we go. Hi. Right. <laughs> so, guys, here are the times. I got it, Nathan. Okay. Yeah, here are the times. The Ford is the leader on the leaderboard with a best time of 7.50.3. And Nathan, the old Tundra? Uh, 8.13.0. Now, of course, the new Tundra has the same powertrain, so it should be similar, but we're gonna find out and what happened with the Chevy. Okay, folks, the Chevy Silverado was delivered to us with the wrong rear end. It was a 308 rear end, which was not good for heavy towing, and frankly, we weren't able to do a proper test. So today we'll add two more trucks to this leaderboard, and we have a phone call out to Chevy as well as Nissan to get all the trucks up the Ike Gauntlet. Damn straight. Now the cool thing about the Tundra is that it looks cool. 
downside of course is that it's not all new it's basically a cosmetic redo so let's find out how much it squats down when we load it up with the trailer so right now we're at let's call it 55 inches we'll let the boys hook up the trailer and we'll see how much it squats Last time Roman got 55 inches, and this time with the trailer, yeah, it's about 53 inches, so a loss of two inches. Now, in case you're wondering, this is the Diamond in the Rough, my old Lincoln Continental, and we haven't done much to it, so we're using it as ballast for now. Nathan, how much does it weigh? Combine everything weighs 7,200 pounds. And when you add me, you, and Mr. Truck? Oh, maybe it was a 246, 700 pounds extra. So we're towing about 8,000 pounds give or take whatever Nathan has for lunch. Yeah, yeah, let's just hit the road, come on. All right, let's go do it. All right, gentlemen, we are about to pop out of the Eisenhower Tunnel <laughs> and do the first part of the Ike Gauntlet, and that is downhill. So the question, of course, is not just how the pickup handles going uphill, but more importantly, how it breaks going downhill. So I'm gonna put it in tow haul mode I have reset the MPG computer so we'll know exactly how much fuel, according to the tow up we've used going down and up. And it's a lovely day, so here we are. We're rocking it. And there's snow on the ground coming out this side of the tunnel. There is snow on the ground. It said watch for ice on the roads and rocks and wildlife. That's quite a combination. All right, so we have about 8,000 pounds. That's with the three of us in here, which is almost uh, maxing this thing out. I think we're getting close to it. We're more heavy duty reporters, so it's, it's a lot of weight. <laughs> All right, I'm already having to hit the brakes. The idea is to keep it at the advised speed limit and it quickly exceeded 60 MPH. And I can feel it pushing the pickup. Now the one thing that Toyota doesn't have, which all the other guys have, at least all the domestic pickups have, is an integrated brake controller. Right. And that'll affect, besides being a simple system to hook up, it also will affect your sway control on your trailer. These trucks have all gone to that kind of a system where you actually control some of the sway on a bumper pull trailer, and if it's not integrated, it can't do as much as what it can on the other makes out there. Yeah, yeah, I, I can sense that this thing is starting to sway just a little bit now. In the 2014 model, which is the one we're in, of course, it is using a little computer in the Toyota to help stop that sway, but you're right, if you don't have an integrated brake controller, you can't use the brakes on the trailer. Basically, uh, the computer in the truck and the integrated brake controller, which it doesn't have, can't talk to each other, so. Right, you mean, that means you need to watch the runaway truck ramps just in case, they're swaying too much. <laughs> That'll control sway, because it'll stop you in about 10 feet. No. Ah, but see folks, <laughs> what you guys are forgetting is that we do have automatic headlight adjusters, right? Oh, that's great, and that makes up for what, the two inches of squat we have? Yeah. You got three inches of headlight adjustment, two inches of squat, so you're covered. So you're not going to be shining your headlights on your neighbors coming at you. So no silly brake controller, but we have the headlight thing. That's that, awesome. That is a nice feature. Folks, these headlights adjust on the brand new Tundra. Check this out. Come here. Right now, this is the level. Can you see where it is? And now, down it goes. See? Isn't that cool? Hey, Kent, why is that good? Well, if your back end squats with the trailer, you need to have the headlights change angle, otherwise you're shining in the stars with a loaded trailer. Or blinding people on the highway. Exactly. People don't like to get flashed when you're pulling down the road. Хорошо, давай проверим. Триста один. Триста один впереди. Three hundred and one degrees. It's great to have a trained Russian mechanic. Oh yeah, that's great. Uh, everybody should have one. <laughs> everybody should have one. He's <laughs> temperamental. Yes, he is. He, he is, but as long as he has his vodka and his borscht. <laughs> he's, he's a happy Russian. 74. 74. Oh, yeah. Holy cow. Oh, we need to put more brake pressure on it. Yeah, I don't, think it was, I don't think that trailer was braking on. Not much. Yeah. Well, once That's, again, integrated brake controller would be nice. Exactly. All right, guys. Here we go. I gauntlet. 
in the brand new 2014 Tundra. Nathan, you got your uh, stopwatch ready to go? I will have it ready in five seconds, hopefully. Cool. I've got it in tow haul mode. We've got a quarter tank of gas, and uh, <laughs> we're getting 13 <laughs> miles to the gallon right now. And I reset yeah. this, so we'll see what we're getting when we get to the top, because yes. I think it's going to be different. Now, of course, we're going from about 9,000 feet of elevation gain all the way up to about 12, that's give or take. Uh, that means that up here we're losing about 30% of the engine's power, which is substantial, so you're talking over 100 horsepower. All right, Nathan, when we get by these yellow signs, you hit the stopwatch. Good. So... Right now. We're rolling. We're rolling. All right, wide open throttle. I've got it wide open. There's a Corolla in front of me. Actually, it's an old... Yeah, it is a Corolla. Pretty crappy Corolla. But I'm going to pass him. Look at that. <laughs> Now the goal is to maintain 60 miles an hour, which I can do at this beginning part, but it's much harder when we get to the C part, which is coming up pretty quick. Yeah, we'll see how these nationally aspirated engines do. They're both very, very similar trucks, horsepower, torque-wise. We're, we're neck and neck. This will be a very close contest. It's going to be basically a contest between torque, where this has 3,600, that's where the peak torque is, 3,600 RPMs. The Ram peaks out at 3,950. So we'll see if that 350 foot-pounds of torque gives the Tundra an advantage. Now, what the Ram has is it has a closer gear ratio. The Ram being an 8-speed means direct drive is in 6th gear. So 6 and down, the ratios are closer together than what they are in this Tundra 6-speed. Direct drive on this is 5th gear, so 5th and down, there's a wider gap than what the Ram has. So if that gear ratio in the transmission of the Ram helps having that many more gears closer together, we'll find out if that will beat out the torque advantage of the Tundra. Uh, so far, I'm having no issues maintaining the speed limit, but it hasn't gotten steep yet, so we'll see what happens when uh, when the Eisenhower gauntlet starts to bite. Yeah, when it kicks in, it'll pull us back. We'll feel like a semi-track. Now, if I recall right, we went, what, just over eight minutes on the last Tundra we tested, so that's kind of what we're shooting for. Right, it was second place on speed. Yep. EcoBoost Ford beat it out. Yep. Here we go. It's starting to get a little steeper. So far, no problem. The engine's at 4,000 RPM. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's slowing down a little bit, guys. And I've got the pedal to the metal, gentlemen. This is the altitude brake. Yeah. This is, this, is where, uh, this is where it gets real. So, I think it's important to say this. Oftentimes people are like, well, if you can maintain 60 miles an hour, what's the point of this? And the problem is we can't maintain 60 miles an hour. You can maintain it at the start of the bike gauntlet, but as you get higher, the altitude gets greater, the air gets thinner, and the truck gets slower. Exactly. It's just choking down on the power. And, you know, Add to that, guys, 0 to 60, getting off the line, getting to 60 miles per hour, each truck's different. Yeah, and I had it floored, dude. As I have it floored right now, we're still maintaining 60, but just barely, and I have got it floored all the way down. Yeah, the low rear end, the 430 rear end axle ratio on this is helping along with that little advantage on the torque. So this is actually an uh, impressive truck, especially when they haven't changed anything since uh, 2007, the drivetrain. You know, it's doing a lot better than the old Tundra. I gotta tell oh, you, really? yeah, I don't know what they did with it. They it's, tweaked it and didn't tell us. <laughs> maybe they tweaked it, but I remember at the same point along the. Uh, and you can check out that video, by the way, on tfltruck.com. We were already struggling, and we're still maintaining that 60 MPH. It is cooler, though. Right now, it's much cooler than it was last time we were here. Yeah. It does so make a difference. You're exactly right, Nathan. That's a really good point, because you have a lot um, more, well, not a lot more, but you have certainly a little bit more air density as it gets colder. So right. we are getting a little bit more power, and we were doing it in the middle of the summer last time. Is this a natural intercooler? Yes. I still have a floor, guys. And our MPG is down to 8.3, in case you're curious. We are burning gas at a prodigious rate. <laughs> yeah, I hope we don't run out of gas before we get to the tunnel. Yeah. That'd be bad. We better get the 8 miles over with before this thing. I wonder if we're, like, uh, sucking down, you know, 1 gallon or 5 gallons. You can't really tell with this gauge because it's kind of a guess gauge. Yeah. <laughs> a guess <-to> meter. <laughs> We're probably getting three miles to the gallon. Not very precise, but the oil temperature is just perfectly in the middle. Uh, the water temperature, same thing. Oh, oh, it's going below 60. Floored. 
this gives us a chance to enjoy the scenery. Yeah. We're not racing. We're not in the fast lane. We're not in the fast lane. We just passed the halfway point, by the way. Come on, Tundra. You can do it. <laughs> yeah, we just, we just got a little more speed, but it's getting a little steeper again. Watch it slowly creep down. You have to admit that that uh, 5.7 liter V8 does sound good. It's got a nice um, a low run to it. Right, uh, the Hemi sounds better, and the Chevy engine sounds great. Yeah, yeah, this is a, a little bit on the tame side, I suppose you're right, guys. A little different markets. The Toyota market is a little more refined. You got people that are used to cam racing, you know, all those quiet vehicles. So check this out. Look what I brought, Nathan. Ah, uh, sound meter. <laughs> I do have our magic wand. So if, if, if we're very quiet, we can get a setting of uh, decibels as to how loud it is in here. So here we go. So that would be peaking out just under 70 decibels at wide open throttle. Yeah, that's quiet. We're almost 4,000 RPM. That's quiet at 4,000. Is that what you're reading? Yeah. Hold on. Let's be quiet again. 69. That's, oh. that's quiet. <laughs> I almost went off the road. <laughs> you okay, Nathan? <laughs> I think I'm multitasking too much. Way too much. <laughs> yeah, we can check that when we hit 5,000 RPM. That would really tell us something, too. Right, why don't you check it? You're the one with both hands. I should have both hands on the steering wheel. Yeah. Just go ahead and push the green button, I guess. Yeah, to turn on. Okay. All right, we're getting to the top, guys, and we're going below 60. My foot is all the way down, all the way down. That's now big. it's slowing down. Now we're getting down more toward 55. Oh, you can really yeah, feel it. Close. Yeah, when you get up here, close to 12,000, it's really starting to bite. We haven't changed gear RPM. It's holding right there, which is a good. That's a good grunt indication of what the torque is doing for this truck. It's we're, holding steady. We're, we're we're down to like a less than half a. Quarter. Less than a quarter of a tank. We've used a lot. And uh, we're down to 6.6 .6 MPG. And I see the top of the tunnel, and we're really slowing down now. Now we can't have to go. Oh. Yeah, we're 5,000. Staying the same rate. Right. Tell us when to stop. All right, when you get to see those stops, stop lights, Nathan? Yeah. That's the end of it. Yeah. Right there. Uh, that's going to be close. The last time. All right. And now. All right, we just came out of the other side of the Ike Gauntlet, the Johnson Tunnel. <laughs> Johnson. <laughs> All right, Nathan, what was the time? The time was 7.57, 7, sorry, 7.57, which is faster than last time, and I think it has to do with the weather here. Why do show that's the camera? The, that's yeah. the natural intercooler we have with this altitude when it's cold. Our natural intercooler. Yeah, we were able to maintain uh, 60 miles per hour for most of the gauntlet, which we it's couldn't do good. last time. Yeah, it's very good. And the decibels going into the tunnel at six or 5,000 RPM was like a 70.1, so it's very little above the 4,000 RPM. That's impressive to be at 5,000 RPM and be this quiet in the cab. Yeah, this is very quiet, and the little uh, light just came on saying we have no fuel, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> that was good timing. So we yeah. we were going 6.7 mpg on the entire up and down loop. So uh, yeah, it's thirsty, all right. Gentlemen, I believe the Tundra went 757. Now the question is, can Nathan and his big bold Ram beat that? They're really closely matched. This is going to be a really good challenge. And I think that's going to be another video, Nathan. Absolutely. Episode 5. As always, this is Roman. And Nathan. And Kent. Saying thanks for watching. And remember what, Nathan? Cars are for wussies. We'll see you next time. Ciao. <laughs>